Please be seated. We had our Christmas pageant here uh, this past Sunday. Some of you were probably here for it. Some of you were actually here. Uh, and it was a wonderful occasion for all the reasons uh, that Christmas pageants are wonderful occasions. But this year I was particularly struck by something about the rehearsal the day before. Uh, this pageant that we do with the Congregational Church uh, that we have done for the last three years is designed to be very low impact. There's just one rehearsal on Saturday and then uh, the performance the next day. On Saturday, for the first half hour, before coming down here to the sanctuary to rehearse, people gathered up in the parish hall over the course of a half an hour uh, for a little something to eat and for, to look at the costumes. And from the minute each of the kids, one by one, came into that room, you could feel among them a very strong sense of excitement and anticipation. Some of the kids had yet to decide what they wanted to be, a shepherd or a sheep, an angel or a donkey, a commitment. Uh, it is. Uh, for some of the older kids, uh, there was the awareness that there was going to be one rehearsal and then one performance the next day, and that added a certain Let's hit the iceberg drive to the whole moment. But for all of them, the sense was palpable that Christmas, this unique and wonderful time, especially in the lives of small children, a time that they've been waiting for and building up to for weeks, Christmas was really just about to happen. The occasion of a pageant was a sure sign that we were almost there for children. And the smaller they are, the clearer it is. At Christmas time, there's a feeling of transport into a different realm of existence. It's a realm that has about it a strain of pure joy, of supernatural possibilities, a realm where the best things you could possibly hope for really show up and come from places you would never in a million years expect to find them, like, say, down the chimney. It's not just about the presence for them. I mean, it is about the presence for them, but it's not just about the presence for them. It's about the new world that they represent. Well, do you see? The kids are on to something. Because theologically speaking, this is not a bad approach to the meaning of the birth of Jesus Christ. The sense of promise that will be fulfilled. The sense of justice that will be done. The sense of joy that is eternal. And all of this in utter defiance of reason and logic and everything about this real world that we live in that stands in the way of all that. Children are much more ready to receive that truth. So what about the rest of us? What do we do? How do we handle it? We, to whom, for better or worse, elves and reindeer no longer loom quite so large. The story of the Nativity in the Gospel of Luke, which we hear every year at Christmas, is like a favorite piece of music. We just we experience its resonances that way. And when we hear it, we tend to listen for the parts that are most familiar, that we know and like the best. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, except to the extent that we don't pay attention. This year, let's pay attention to the shepherds. Shepherds are out in the field at night doing their job, just like any other night. And then all of a sudden, Luke tells us, out of nowhere, there's an angel standing before them. And the angel tells them not to be afraid. In the Bible, whenever someone sees an angel, it's a terrifying experience. The angel tells them not to be afraid that he brings good news, that to you, he says, is born this day a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. The angel brings him smack dab to the threshold of the kingdom of God. And he tells them where the baby is and what the scene will look like, and then suddenly there's a crowd of heavenly beings singing a hymn, and then they all disappear. This is not what happens on a normal night out in the field. So the shepherds have no doubt that something big has really happened. And they say, let us go 
now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. And off they go. And when they get there and find the situation just as the angel described, Luke says, after they've seen it, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Now Luke's nativity story has a number of episodes, of which this is the culmination. But before that, there's Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary and all the people around them leading up to this point. And over the course of this story, amazement is a standard reaction that people have when they see God at work. It happens several times over the course of the story. It's actually a standard reaction throughout all four Gospels to, of people to what Jesus does. The miracles, the healings, the things Jesus says that stop people in their tracks. Amazement, astonishment, wonder. It gets translated in various ways, but they all have to do with the stunned realization that people have that there's this new being standing in front of them. And when Luke tells us that the people who heard the shepherd's story were amazed, it means that at least to some extent they believed something of what they heard. They knew that something extraordinary had happened. But amazement, astonishment, wonder of this kind, is not the same thing as faith. Faith is not simply wondering at this new being, but evolving from that to living in it, to acting according to it, to keeping it alive, to not being simply spectators, but participants. I think one great working description of people in this state is what we heard in the letter to Titus tonight. It's the state of a people who are zealous for good deeds. Amazement in the Gospels is not the same thing as faith, and it does not necessarily lead to faith. Even Jesus' enemies in the Gospels were amazed by what he did. What they saw was what they saw. They just couldn't take the next step. They were too concerned to hold on to what they had. So the question is, what do we do? We who are amazed. We who listen to this beautiful music of this story. At the end of the Gospel story, Luke tells us that the shepherds returned back to where they'd come from, back to their lives. But this time they were glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Glorifying has to do with making manifest the presence of God in whatever way. So the shepherds are living by faith. They are zealous for good deeds. They are living in this new reality. We hear this message every year. It's the same one the shepherds heard from the angel. So are we content to remain in our wonder, our admiration of the story as at a museum piece? Or do we recognize, as our children do at Christmas time, that we always stand on the threshold of a new life that is coming into the world? that is constantly coming into our world. A life of thrilling possibility. A life of outlandish, glorious promise that we are invited to join. It's Christmas Eve. Thanks be to God. Amen.